Hey everyone, first off, I just want to say before we get into this video, I do think you should take advantage of the XP bonus on leveling the new bow if you plan to use it at all in the future. Resources in Genshin are precious, and it would suck to build it later needing the full resource cost, but this should still be said. In this video, we're going to be talking about Fading Twilight and exactly how good it is in comparison to other 4-star options on every bow character. Before we get started, if you enjoy these types of videos, make sure to hit the like button because it tells YouTube that the video doesn't suck. Also, consider subscribing if you haven't already. It's my goal to hit 100k subscribers before the end of the year, and I think we're more than capable of reaching that milestone. Anyways, my name is Braxophone, and I want to talk about Fading Twilight, the new bow. To get started, there's a lot of people overselling the new free-to-play bow from the event, and while I do think that it is a good idea to get it because it's easy and free to get, it's not necessarily super useful right now unless you don't have any other options. So let me explain. This bow has an effect that's sort of deceptive. It gives you damage bonus, which for those of you who don't know, is better than attack percent most of the time. It's a rotating buff that gives you a different amount of damage every 7 seconds or so when you hit opponents. At refinement 5, which is absolutely free, you max out at 12, 20, and 28% damage bonus. The damage bonus itself is nice, but there's one major issue with it, and it's that the buff is completely dynamic. What that means is that even for skills and bursts that retain all their stats for the entire duration, like Shangling, Beidou, and Fischl, just as an example, the bow will still rotate through its damage types and if not timed or played correctly, could either net you low or high damage. If it were a stat that could be snapshotted, then it would already be much stronger since you'd be able to run it on characters like Ganyu, Venti, and Fischl. In some cases, for players without access to a wide arsenal of bows, it might even be somewhat usable on DPS characters. However, because it's dynamic, you're gambling on your damage for that character. The effect will trigger off field, so there's effectively no way to control the buff at all. Now, Yolan, the newest character, character doesn't have a burst that snapshots, but there's another reason players should be using a different weapon for her, and the reason is mainly just that she needs a lot of energy. You might be thinking, but Brax, the bow has an energy recharge stat, so it should work for Yolan, right? Wrong, 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 wrong. Well, actually it does, I just wanted to... I just wanted to do that. But the problem with this bow on Yaban isn't actually the bow, it's just that Favonius War Bow is miles better. The energy recharge stat on Fading Twilight is incredibly low in comparison to Favonius, and not only does Favonius have a much better energy recharge stat, literally double Twilights, it also generates particles, which effectively makes it give you even more energy. The amount of energy return you get from using Favonius allows your stats to be so much more flexible overall, because if you think about how many substats on your artifacts that don't have to be energy recharge, recharge because you're using Favonius, you actually have a much easier time building your lawn to higher uptime and damage potential. Yes, Twilight gives a bit better damage, but it's not so much that it's worth farming extra perfect artifact stats when you get Favonius Warbow for free at AR20. But like I said at the start of the video, it's not the worst weapon ever. It's just less worth investing into than Favonius for your lawn if you have the option. But there's more issues with the bow than what I just talked about, mainly being the characters that can actually utilize it and get more from it than other free-to-play options. Options. So let's take a look at every bow user in the game currently and talk about which ones they want to use. And since we just talked about Yolan a bit, we'll actually skip her for this part. First, I want to talk about everyone's favorite Genshin Impact character, Aloy. Aloy's role hasn't really been decided, whether it's sub-DPS or generalist support and battery. But an important thing to note with Aloy is the battery part. Aloy is technically the best battery in Genshin for cryo units, and with a low-cost burst, she doesn't really need energy recharge at all. While she could benefit from the damage bonus in the passive, not only would you have to shuffle through three damage cycles of Twilight to get the most damage off of her, there's also just a lot of weapons that perform better. As an example, in a melt setup, Aloy can take better advantage of Windbloom Ode, Alley Hunter, Moon's Moon, Prototype Crescent with its passive, and Stringless. Not to mention, Prototype Crescent is also refinable. On top of that, crit weapons end up being valuable for their ease of building crit on any character, so ultimately, it's not really a great option for Aloy over other weapons. Next up is Amber. She can be used as an elegy support with Hu Tao, but generally speaking, she doesn't see a lot of use outside of that. If you're deciding to play Amber, you're building her either with elegy for the end, Favonius Warbow, or a DPS bow like Prototype Crescent. On top of that, you might use Wind 
Windbloom Ode, Moon's Moon, or Stringless Honor. But with Favonius being free, building support Amber is pretty easy already. And for DPS Amber, you actually just have better options overall. As far as Diona goes, Diona's another example of characters that can't really take full advantage of the new weapon. Hypothetically, it's an ER main stat, so it's not the worst weapon out there, but generally speaking, Diona wants Favonius War Bow or Sacrificial Bow. DPS Diona is not the typical build for her, and even if it was, the bow would lose out to a lot of other options. Diona doesn't really need Fading Twilight either. As far as Fischl goes, though it looks amazing on her, Fischl doesn't really want the bow either. She has a ton of different options that deal more damage, and she doesn't really need much energy recharge for herself since she's constantly generating Electro Particles. Alley Hunter, Stringless, and Prototype Crescent are better weapons for her, and on top of that, you also have crit weapons like Black Cliff or Viridescent that increase her damage potential further with crit builds. Because Fading Twilight doesn't allow snapshotting, anytime you re-up Oz with her burst or place him down and he does damage, the state can change and you can lose a large amount of damage bonus. Generally speaking, unless you don't have other options, Fischl is going to want to use one of those instead. But what about Ganyu? Well, for Ganyu, funny enough, it's actually okay on her in a support setup, but again the issue is that it's just okay, and not really good. Ganyu has a really high base attack and multipliers on her charged attack, so generally you want to use her as a main DPS, which would make Twilight not super good on her. But let's say you use her as a support. Well, due to the nature of cryo teams and Ganyu's energy generation, you don't really need much energy recharge on her to start, and the ER you do have can come from substats or the emblem set. You can get a ton of damage out of Ganyu in a support setup with something like Stringless, Prototype Crescent by activating its passive, Moon's Moon, and Alley Hunter. And once again, the ease of building crit with Viridescent Hunt and Black Cliff ends up making her easier to build, so overall, it's a middle-of-the-pack support weapon for Ganyu. As for Goro, well, he just needs a lot of energy, and in Geo teams, Favonius works amazing on him. Sacrificial does too, but considering that Favonius is a free-to-play weapon and you get one around AR-20, you probably won't even need it. With that said, Fading Twilight can be an okay option for him if you don't have another energy recharge weapon available, but in general, it's still not as good as the other two. Moving on to Child, though, well, I don't really need to explain this one much, but the simplest way is that Child is a damage dealer that doesn't really need energy recharge since he's on the field so much as is. Sure, energy recharge stats help him get his burst, but it shouldn't be a focus of the build. For four-star bows, you'd want to build them with Viridescent Hunt, Rust, Prototype Crescent, Stringless, Black Cliff Warbow, or even Hamayumi if you're playing him with Bennett. Overall, Child just doesn't really want or need it. Next up is Venti. You might be wondering about our favorite bard, and the truth is, he doesn't really want it as much either. To be clear, it's not really a horrible weapon on him, but usually Venti doesn't really have energy issues to begin with because of his particle generation and energy refund passive. As he ascends, he also gets an energy recharge stat increase, so he's generally pretty good on energy. He would much prefer Stringless or Windbloom Ode in the bow category, and you could even get away with a crit build on him worst case. Favonius Warbow is also good on him for battering other members of your team, so a lot of players will build him that way too. It's just not the best option, even for free-to-play players, to use Fading Twilight on Venti. Best Girl is another one of those cases where you don't really need the bow at all. Yoimiya doesn't need energy recharge on her weapon. It's just not something she needs or wants. Her burst isn't the most important part of her kit, and though it does deal damage and give attack buff to the rest of your team, you're not going to have trouble getting it back. She just needs help dishing out damage from weapons like Rust, Viridescent Hunt, Black Cliff, and Prototype Crescent. But unlike all of these characters that I just described, there is one character that benefits a lot from this bow, and not a ton of players have actually noticed it yet. If we look at Kujo Sara, the Electro Bennett, she gets a lot out of this weapon. First off, the main stat is Energy Recharge, which Sara needs most of the time since she has an 80 cost burst that's important to her kit, but also doesn't generate many particles. But on top of that, this may be Sara's best free-to-play option in general, because not only does it have that Energy Recharge main stat that she needs, it also has a high base attack as well. It's actually tied for the highest base attack available for a 4-star bow. And for those of you who don't know or don't play Sara, she gives your active character an attack buff with both her skill and her burst. And that buff is based off of Sara's base attack, which is a combination of her weapon attack stat and her character's attack stat. Sara has been in a weird spot for free-to-play because she was demanding of an energy source, but also none of the energy recharge 4-stars had amazing base attack. So for Sara, this weapon actually solves that. Couple in some damage bonus from the passive, and this bow is actually an amazing free-to-play weapon for her. If you use her for any Electro teams, especially with Dendro in the near future, this bow could be a great investment for Sara. But just taking a look 
at all of the characters we talked about, for most characters, Fading Twilight ends up being a bit of a miss, even for free-to-play players. And a lot of the event weapons we've had in the past have been hits and a lot of them have been misses. For example, Windbloom Ode and Festering Desire are great free-to-play options for a lot of characters, but we don't want to talk about Yai's weapon, that was a mistake. This bow, Fading Twilight, in both my opinion and statistically, is a miss on a ton of different characters. That's not to say that it's really bad, because it's still a free weapon with decent attack, and at the end of the day, it can be useful for a lot of accounts, especially ones without a super versatile arsenal of bows to choose from. But it still gets overshadowed by many of the 4-star bow options, including completely free-to-play ones. And we didn't even cover the 5-star bows, which consistently beat it across the board, except for on Yalan. So with that in mind, I do think taking advantage of the XP bonus is a good idea if you ever plan on using this bow, but if you don't ever want to play Sara and you have a wide arsenal of 4 and 5-star bows, you may just not need to invest the resources at all. I kind of just wish they had gone with a really low base attack and a really high energy recharge stat, so that way it could have been a dedicated Yalan weapon, and also been pretty good on characters that are supports. And to be honest, I don't really know why they went with this design, unless it was actually planned for Sara the entire time, maybe she's coming back pretty soon, but in general, it does feel like it's exclusively amazing on Sara, and then for everyone else, it's pretty mid. Either way, the 1.5 times XP is really good and hard to pass up, and I personally will be leveling it for my Sara, since it's just a good option overall for her, and my elegy is usually taken. But as far as Yalan, it's smart to stick with Favonius Warbow, and all my other characters have other free-to-play options as well. It's likely if you've been playing the game for a while, you also have a wider range of 4-star bows, or even 5-star bows. It can be deceptive because it has a damage bonus passive, which is generally really good, but its main stat and the time debuffs of it end up making it lose out to a lot of other options on a ton of characters. It's free though, and won't likely return ever, so overall it's still worth getting, and if you think you're ever going to use it, make sure to take advantage of the 1.5 times XP bonus for it, but don't scuff your own damage just because it's the new and hyped thing to do. The bow is pretty middle of the pack on most characters, and in general pretty overhyped by the community, and I don't want anyone to get the wrong idea about its power level and start using it instead of other bows that are just generally better. Anyways, thanks for watching everyone. As usual, if you've enjoyed, leave a comment down below to let me know, and consider subscribing to the channel. I go live a few days a week at twitch.tv slash Braxophone, and if you like live content, you should definitely go drop a follow, and turn on that bell so you know when I'm going live. Have a good one gamers, and I'll catch you next time.